Well, the Democrats have a deal. The progressive wins in the sweeping infrastructure proposal announced last night. Ladies and I think we're going to get a lot done. President Biden met with Senate Democrats on Capitol Hill today as they announced a deal on a $3.5 trillion spending plan, according to a source familiar with the negotiations. The human infrastructure bill would dramatically expand Medicare, provide funding for clean energy, universal pre-K, affordable child care, paid family and medical leave. It would prohibit tax increases on people making under $400,000 a year. Now, the bill needs all Senate Democrats and independents to agree on it in order to pass it into law using that budget reconciliation process, which evades a Republican filibuster, it can pass on a party line vote. Now, it is in addition to the nearly $580 billion bipartisan infrastructure bill for roads, highways, bridges, and major public works projects. Senate Democratic leaders hope to advance both the bills on a dual track system before Congress leaves for August recess. Joining me now is one of the architects of the $3.5 trillion spending plan, the chair of the Senate Budget Committee, Senator Bernie Sanders, independent of Vermont. Um, first, Senator Sanders, I guess let's start off with, with what is in this bill. It's been a little hard to keep track of everything, both in the negotiations. There's been a bunch of proposals in the White House. There was a bunch of proposals from the Budget Committee. So, so just sort of top line, what, what are we talking about here? Okay, what we're talking about is the understanding that for decades, working families have been struggling, the very rich have been getting richer, and you got billionaires and large corporations that pay in a given year nothing in taxes. Point number one, this bill will substantially raise taxes on the richest people in this country and the largest corporations. That's number one. Number two, for decades, we have ignored the needs of working families. Everybody knows that we have a child care system, which is dysfunctional. In my state, $15,000 a year, and that's about average nationally. Pre-K, the same. We have a higher education system where kids can't afford to go to college or are leaving school deeply in debt. Under the proposal we are bringing forth, no family in America would pay more than 7% of their income for childcare, universal pre-K, free tuition at public colleges and universities. This legislation ends the international disgrace, Chris. We're the only country on earth that doesn't provide paid family and medical leave. We're going to end that. We are going to deal in the most aggressive way imaginable with the housing crisis where you got 18 million families paying 50% of their limited incomes on housing. We're dealing in the other bipartisan bill with the physical infrastructure. And of course, we are making the largest investment in this country's history in transforming our energy system away from fossil fuel to combat the existential threat of climate change, among many other provisions. In other words, what the president has done and what we have done he said, you know what, let's look at the crises facing working families and the planet. Let's address those crises. There's one uh, specific part of the climate uh, uh, climate legislation that I've been very focused on, which is the clean energy standard. And it's really important. You know, many states have this. It requires states to have a target for how much of the electricity is produced by non-carbon sources. We don't have a national national one. A lot of climate folks think this is one of the key mechanisms. That's in the bill right now, right? That is in the bill, and that's going to stay in the bill. OK. Now, here's the thing, and I know I know you hate to talk parliamentary stuff. I know you do. I don't like it. Either, As a matter of fact, again, I do. With You're right. <laughs> OK, OK. <laughs> so but I, there, the clean energy standard is a great example, right? Key policy, a really good policy. I personally am very happy to see in the bill. I've been really focused on this. Is, can that go through reconciliation? Well, with the way it can go in, look, we are dealing with, I won't bore everybody with Senate rules, reconciliation, and the bird rules, uh, but we are going to achieve the goals that the president uh, has brought forth in terms of the reduction of uh, carbon. Uh, so we're going to do it in the best way that we can do it. And among many other provisions, I mean, we're going to be talking about moving aggressively in transportation, claim, you know, moving toward an electric transportation system. Uh, dealing with agriculture, dealing with weatherization, 
uh, making sure that our power plants are not reliant on carbon uh, but sustainable energy. Uh, also, I should tell you, we are investing tens of billions of dollars in something that I personally am very excited about, and that is a civilian climate core. We're going to give hundreds and hundreds of thousands of young people who believe passionately in the need to reverse climate change the opportunity to earn good pay and get an educational benefit as well to help us combat climate change. So add it all together, you know what, in my view, this is probably yeah. the most consequential piece of legislation since the 1930s. Yeah, I mean, I, I, the, the, so I want to play what Joe Manchin said. This can be passed without Republicans' reconciliation. Um, it has to be, it has to pencil out, right? It can't, it can't uh, be deficit spending. My, again, my understanding about the rules here. So I want to play what Manchin said, which was, he sounds like, it sounds like people are open. Everything I've heard from Democrats today is basically more or less on the same page. This is what he had to say. Take a listen. I've been very clear that I want to see the pay for us and make sure that whatever we do is going to be globally competitive. Is 3.5 trillion too high? Is 3.5 trillion too high? Depends if we can pay for it. It'll still be globally so competitive. So there, the, the point is, is this is already penciled out. Like everyone who worked on this has done the math, right? Am I correct in that? Yes. Yeah. So, so the, the, yeah, so there's going to be, there will be, I'm sure, fights and wrangling about specifics in this. Be. But the last thing I want to say to you is this. There, there is something fascinating here happening when you talked about the New Deal, where I, I feel like I'm watching a kind of a new model of legislating, which is basically this. It's like, here's what the Democrats ran on. Here's the Democratic agenda. It's almost like parliamentary, where Biden and the rest of the party got behind these big infrastructure investments and climate and the care economy. And what you're coming forward today is basically like saying, here it is all together. One thing, we're not going to pass it piecemeal. We're not going to, you know, do it out of these committees. This is this is the agenda right here. Is that a fair way to sort of characterize well, Chris, what we're seeing? We cannot pass it piecemeal because to do it through regular order, you need 60 votes. We're not going to get one Republican vote. And the other point that I would That's make, right. Chris, and I believe this passionately, is that at a time when so many Americans believe that government has forgotten them, turned their backs on their needs. What I hope this legislation will do is restore the faith of the American people that their government can represent ordinary Americans, not just the wealthy and the powerful and their lobbyists. So this, in many respects, is a transformative piece of legislation. All right. Senator Bernie Sanders and the Budget Committee, it's a, a, a fascinating day and, and a lot a lot of interesting things to play out ahead of us, but thanks so much. Come back soon. Okay.